My questions are for Senator Lewick. Uh, a couple of questions. First off, on the school lunch bill. Um, you know, Superintendent Benson is saying in Hankinson they don't, they don't do that. They call it shame and call it whatever. I thank him for that. But somebody's paying for that. And I don't know that anybody in this room uh, really would look at themselves and say I'm paying too little in property taxes. And of course, uh, Superintendent Benson is one of the big uh, recipients of your property tax dollars. And so with a state that has, and I'm sorry, we keep talking about we're, we're broke, we're broke, we're not broke. The state of North Dakota has money. They have money. Money that was put into funds that was supposed to go towards building North Dakota for the future. And so my question for Senator Louie is, why? Why, if, if you're sitting there saying, okay, we have a situation where people are pushing for 100% payment of hot lunch programs, offer the amendment. You could have done that from the floor. Stand up on the floor. Make the amendment. Instead, vote against it. Now, why? Because it seems to me that, and believe me, it happens. I had a cook from Kindred come up to me and say, you have to make this an issue, Joel. You have to because I'm not shaming these kids. You know, this is, this is ridiculous. And so the state has the money, we have the ability, and yet you voted against it. And I think we all deserve to know what you're doing to make sure it gets paid. Uh, I, there's nothing I can do to make sure it gets paid. I know that I'm on uh, the side where we feel that there was other options coming at us, and we needed to see that first. The bill that was also issued on the floor that day was the anti-shaming bill. Now, and that passed, I think, almost unanimously, if not unanimously. The federal guidelines on, um, on uh, poverty levels, raising that to 200%, we felt that there was gonna be some issues with uh, it affecting other state and federal programs where the 200 or the 500% uh, of, uh, of, the, of the next bill, the um, uh, funding for private schools, that was just way out of line. I don't know who thought or dreamt that up. That's the reason I voted against that thing in a big way. Uh, that is not proper in my eyes whatsoever. Um, but I it's think not funded. It's, it's not a, happening. It's it, not. It, it got defeated. And, and that's it, my point. My point is, when you ran for office, the one thing that you made crystal clear was that you were a leader in the Republican caucus. Part of your brochure and everything was that you were president pro tem of the Senate. Yes. Which means that within your caucus, your caucus respected you enough to make you one of their leaders. Which, yes. quite frankly, having served there, I respect. What I'm saying is, if you're a leader in their caucus, why didn't you stand up, take it on, get these things funded, and vote for it instead of against it? Mr. Heitkamp, I didn't even know about that until it come uh, just a short time before. We never even had a caucus in between then. And That's furthermore... Right. It's your job to know what, what's coming on the floor. It's your job to know what you're voting on, what you can make amendments on. I don't think you realize how busy I am out there, Joel. I, I think I do, I serve. <laughs> <laughs> I have been absolutely strapped from the minute I walk in that door from about 6 o'clock in the morning until I leave at 6 at night or later at night. And uh, there's no lunchtime, there's nothing. And uh, for me to uh, isolate each and every one of these bills and to see like a thousand emails a day come through there and that canned email stuff ought to be outlawed, uh, but nevertheless, I, I, what I, the way that I vote is I look at the information that I have at the time and uh, whether it's good for uh, Richland County and District 25 and or if it's good for the state of North Dakota, I have to weigh that all out. And I promise you I do that on every bill. Now, if that information is not complete, I can't, I can't make that proper judgment, maybe. But on the Senate, you can make a floor amendment. That's the beauty of serving in the Senate. You, you can make a floor amendment. And if you're part of leadership, which you said you were, then you can go back, you can pull it off the table, you can pull it off until you know what it is, you can move it to the bottom of the calendar. There's a million steps you can use to make sure that that bill 
has, you have the opportunity to come with a red envelope and offer an amendment. And I want to go back to this, because the 500% level for the private schools, the private school funding passed. Now, I recognize that, that you voted against it, but I want to go back to the leadership issue, which is, were there amendments offered on the floor? Did you talk to your caucus? Once they get funded, and, and you mentioned earlier the Catholic Conference and how you work closely with the Catholic Conference. The Catholic Conference, which I'm Catholic, is the ones that are pushing for private school funding. They are. And the one thing that I will guarantee this room is that once they get funded, once they get these voucher bills, the next session it'll be more. Which is exactly what happened with the oil tax breaks that you guys passed. You gave the oil tax industry a tax break when they were making record profits, and then the next time you came back, you took the cap off that so they got even more tax breaks. That's what's going to happen with these vouchers for private schools. And, and again, you got the opportunity to amend on the floor, and as a leader, take these guys onto the caucus and stand and speak, Larry. Uh, Joel, how did I vote on both of those? Well, you voted no on the private schools. Both of them. You said you're a leader in your caucus. Well, I'm no your longer the president pro tem. There's um, been two pro tems since me. All right? Uh, but the thing is, is that uh, when you get, there's two things I'm up against here. One is that rural versus urban and east versus west. And uh, like it or not, in a split district like uh, Richland County and District 25 is, uh, we are always challenging something, one place or another. And uh, it's just like having four Democrats in the in the in the co in the Senate floor. It's not right. It's not enough. I know that because we don't have. We don't in have fairness, enough. you guys put a lot of money in to make sure that happens. But that, that, that being said, uh, you know, my here's what I mean by that, Joel. I serve. Here's what I mean I by that. Oh, stop. Let's stop, right Let's stop right here. Let's stop right here. We these questions are supposed to be so all can respond. So I'm going to ask you to finish up your comment, Joel. Well, my comment we, is We this. need to move on. Did you stand on the floor and take on the funding of private schools? No, I did not. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Yep.